I guess you might say, it's Gnome for the Holidays. Good morning, everyone. It's Stephen here for Bland Designs and Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly vlog for December the 26th, Boxing Day 2022, and it is vlog number 296. And I hope you had a great Christmas. Uh, we had a busy day yesterday, um, and I'm feeling it now, I can tell you, in many ways. Um, but it was great. It was nice. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. But I hope yours was uh, very nice as well. So what have I been working on? Well, in spite of all of the Christmas hubbub and whatnot, I was able to get a project done. And it is the bookshelf wall hanging slash quilt. This is an in the hoop project, meaning that it's all done in my embroidery machine. And I started this, well, I don't remember when I started it. Uh, it was sometime very early this year. Um, I think I may have started it around February. I might have even started as early as January. And it's one of those things that I did a little bit, put it aside, didn't come back to it, to it until a few months later, and that kind of thing. But I was determined I was not going to go into the new year with a UFO, unfinished object. So I got it all done, and it's hanging on my wall in... Uh, my sewing studio and uh, as someone said to me yesterday it's very appropriate for someone like me since I am a reader and I was an English teacher and all that kind of stuff so I'm really happy with the way it turned out um, I've made these kind of projects before and they take a long long time but the final result is worth it so that's one thing. The other thing that I have been working on is my Mosaic Star Quilt, which is the pattern by Stephanie Stitches. It is on Lucy right now, and I've almost got it. Well, I've got three quarters of it, maybe a little bit more of it quilted, and it's coming out quite nice, which I'm very pleased with, especially since um, I want to share it with Stephanie when I get it all done and, you know, show her what I did with her pattern. But uh, that is something I'm hoping to have done by the end of this week. I'm hoping to have the quilting done today. And then all I have to do is make binding and bind it. And it will be done. So stay tuned. I will show that to you next week, hopefully. Okay, so that's what I've been working on as well as preparing for Christmas Day, food, things like that. Again, we'll come to that in a bit. But let's talk a little bit about maybe what you got for Christmas. I know some of you out there are very interested in 3D printing like I am and that may have been on your Christmas list to get a 3D printer. And if you did and this is the very first 3D printer you have ever received or have ever used, you will be pulling out your hair. I can guarantee that. They are not plug and play. You've heard me say that before and I mean, if it has to be assembled, that's going to take you a while. They say it like it takes you 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. No, the first one we got, it took us three and a half hours to put it together. Yeah, um, I, but don't get frustrated. It is a learning curve and you'll have to experiment until you figure out how best to manipulate the settings on it and get the results you want. But along the way, Lots of people have shared their experiences and expertise with 3D printing. And of course, you can find all of that on YouTube. So I have a little bit of a playlist that uh, I found on YouTube that if you are a beginner in 3D printing, you might find this interesting. If you were one of the lucky people to get a 3D printer this year for Christmas, then you're going to want to check out this playlist of videos for beginners. 3D printing is not plug and play, and you've heard me say that many times before. When I got my very first 3D printer, I immediately went to YouTube and did a search for all the videos I could find about 3D printing, and there are a lot. So what I have linked up here is just an initial search for 3D printing for beginners. And I really strongly recommend before you get into any serious 3D printing that you watch a few of these videos. 
these will troubleshoot for you any kind of beginner mistakes you might make. Uh, there may be information about how to set up your printer, settings, uh, using the slicer software for it. A lot of things that are very confusing. And with your new 3D printer, you probably got very little information about how to operate it. So if you want to save yourself a little bit of frustration, then I would suggest you go to a playlist about 3D printing and check it out. You'll learn quite a bit. In fact, even though I've had 3D printers now for almost three years, I still go back to YouTube and look for videos about various aspects of 3D printing because, you know, they're tricky little devices. So if you want to avoid some of the beginner frustration with working with your new 3D printer, then I strongly suggest you go to YouTube for help. So the link for that playlist is in the show notes below. And there's lots of other things in the show notes below as well. Uh, of course, there is the Zoom link for uh, the New Year's Day. Um, so Day with the Idiot Quilter. Uh, that starts at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, some people have said to me, you should change the name to something like, what was one that someone suggested? Uh, Creator's Day or Creative Day or something like that. Because just be, if you don't sew, but you make things, you can join us. You don't have to be a sewist. You do not have to be a quilter. If you're a knitter, a crocheter, if you are a paper crafter, if you're a scrapbooker, if you're an artist, you're a painter, um, whatever, it doesn't matter. If you're a maker, a creative maker, then come join us for a little bit. You don't have to come for the whole day. We're going to run from 8 a.m. to approximately, um, well, we'll probably end it up when we have end up with Stephen and Walter live. Yes, I'm going to try something next Sunday. That's New Year's Day, January the 1st. And you know, on Sunday afternoons at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, we do Stephen and Walter live. Well, <laughs> That's when we're doing so day as well. So I'm going to combine the two. Um, there isn't anything you need to do. If you're already uh, in the Zoom, you can just stay there. If you didn't come to the Zoom, but you're uh, coming in for Stephen and Walter Live, you can do that in the usual method that you use to do that. And so I'm going to combine the two. Yeah, I've done some experiments. I think this is going to work. Um, but it's going to be kind of a neat experiment. So if you want to be part of my experiment, make sure you tune in uh, next uh, next Sunday for Stephen and Walter Live and or and or join. Um, so the so day kind of thing, the creative day. So we'll see how that works out. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Um, so what else? There's a link for um, and I haven't done these in a while. Uh, you know, I have a reoccurring link. It's there all the time. And if I happen to be here in my sewing room working away on something, I'll often turn that on. Often. I haven't done it lately. Turn it on. And if you're in the same boat and you want a little company while you're working on something, click on the link. If I'm here, I'll let you in within a minute or less. If I'm not here, if a minute goes by and you're not let in, you know I'm not here. So I am sorry for some people who may have been trying this out several times and getting a little frustrated because I never seem to be here. Well, what's the excuse I can make for that? I've been busy, yeah, uh, on different things. And it's just not always appropriate. So, you know, sorry about that. Um, I'm going to try to be a little bit more regular on that kind of thing in the new year, but I'm not making any promises because, you know, life happens, right? But the link is there. Um, and there was not a Stephen and Walter live uh, this past week. Well, yesterday, because yesterday was Christmas Day and I was busy with my family here. So we took the day off from Stephen and Walter live. That just means we'll have a whole lot more to talk about come the next Stephen and Walter live. And there are links as well for, I'm looking at my notes, <clears throat> excuse me. There is a link for uh, New York, New Year's Eve. 2016 Sydney Opera House. I'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, there's uh, an episode of The Idiot Quilter, and there's an episode of So Chatty. And the, this 
past week's So Chatty, we did something different. It was based on a suggestion given to me by one of our subscribers who was interested in seeing some things that we have in our house that are kind of antique -y or things that have been handed down to us that mean something to us. And uh, so we did that. So we didn't really talk. Well, we did talk a little bit about uh, sewing uh, because we showed uh, an old sewing machine that used to belong to Walter's mother and it came from Europe and it's a crank. Yeah. So uh, if you haven't seen that, you might want to tune in. Okay. So what are things looking like today weather-wise? This is Boxing Day as well here in Canada. I believe England, they celebrate Boxing Day as well. I'm not really sure what the origins of Boxing Day were. I think it had something, I think it's British. I think that's why Americans don't celebrate Boxing Day. Uh, it had something to do with the Boxer Rebellion of 18-something or other, or maybe even earlier than that. And to be honest, I really don't know anything more about it uh, than that. I should look it up, but uh, that's okay. It's, that's the day when all the big sales are supposed to be on out there. Yeah. In fact, it's not one day anymore. Uh, they were advertising this a month ago. Uh, Boxing Week, Boxing Month, Boxing Day, pre-Boxing Day sales, post-Boxing Day sales. Anything to get your money, right? And to be honest, there was a day and an age when people would line up early, early in the morning to get into the stores for these fantastic deals on like television sets and things like that. And I don't think that exists anymore. Um, not thank, well, thanks to probably online shopping and things like that, you know, online stores have Boxing Day sales, so you don't need to get up early and stand in the cold. Uh, if you're in our climate, um, you can just go online and do your thing. But I've had a few things come into my email box today and ah, I didn't see anything success, uh, interesting, you know, 40% off something that they're getting rid of old stock essentially. And yeah. Yeah. Anything to make a buck? Yeah, well, they're businesses. That's what they do. So anyways, here's looking outside my front here through my ring door camera. And you can see we had we have snow. We did get uh, some snow on Friday. We got the big dump storm of the century. Well, here it was not really the storm of the century. It was messy. Um, it was cold. The snow was blowing. Visibility was not the best. Um, but it's Canada. It's winter. It happens to us. Now, sure, if you're down in Texas or someplace like that and you get this kind of stuff, a little bit different, right? But here in Ontario and other parts of Canada, most parts of Canada, it's winter. But it did cause havoc out in Vancouver at their airport because out in BC, in, in Vancouver area, they're not used to this kind of snow there. Whereas, you know, Edmonton, Calgary, Regina, those places, yeah, they just look at it and laugh at the people out in BC. They kind of laugh at us in Ontario too, because where we live in Ontario, we're right up against Lake Ontario and there's something called lake effect. And so we don't necessarily get as badly hit as just places 20 miles to the north of us do. So yeah, but it's snow, it's winter, it happens. So get over it, people, especially weather people. Oh, these weather people on the news, they they get everybody into a panic. They're talking about survival kits and making sure you're stocked up with enough supplies to last you 72 hours. And, there, and then the new thing, new thing that they now talk about is power outages. Now, I do know in, cert, in the States, um, I heard from my friend Stephanie, that they were having rolling blackouts to conserve energy or stuff like that. Well, we don't have that here. We haven't yet, knock wood, um, for that kind of thing. But, you know, they're talking about high winds, they'll blow down power lines and things like that. Yeah, it's a possibility, but come on. With every storm, there's always that possibility, but they're making it sound like it's the end of the world. So it's just another example. Actually, I don't know how I got onto this rant, but it's just another example of how the media spins everything and gets us all upset in a panic. I don't know. I, maybe I should have made a New Year's resolution to stop watching the news. Because it's never good, is it? And it's always, always spun. 
and exaggerated. You don't know what to believe anymore with it. But anyways, I digress. Here's what it looks like outside my window. And uh, it's a little overcast, I guess, today, but it is December. And uh, right now, current temperature, minus 9 Celsius. Yeah, that's not bad. It's not quite short weather, but shorts weather, but it's definitely livable. So, yeah, that's what's happening. Okay, so I just gave you a little mini rant, but uh, now I have another rant. And it's one of those kind of rants where we'll, we all have been through this. We've all complained about it. And there's nothing happens, nothing changes. And that is, of course, well, I want to ask you a question. Did you get all your Christmas packages before Christmas Day that you may have ordered online? You may have. You may not have. Same thing every year. Postal service here in Canada sucks. Big time. Big time sucks. Um, especially at Christmas. Yes, yes, I know the excuses. The postal service posts on their website and you hear it on the, you know, on advertisements on TV. You know, there's going to be a whole lot of volume of packages that we'll be processing this year. And, you know, just be patient. We'll get it to you, but it may be late. If you didn't mail it by the date that you said, that doesn't matter. If you mail it by the date, they say you may or may not get it. And the whole bit. Well, okay. This isn't anything new. It's kind of like the weather and snow, you know? That isn't anything new. Well, Christmas packages going through the mail is not anything new. It happens every year. The post office knows this. And are they prepared to handle it? Well, they tell you they are. But we know the reality. And then, of course, private courier systems are no better than we had this snowstorm and, uh, you know, delivery personnel couldn't do their routes uh, safely. And yeah, I get that. And that's, that's fine. I'm not complaining about that. You know, they don't only want to see somebody get hurt or die uh, when they're trying to deliver somebody else's Christmas parcel during a blizzard. Okay. I get that. But it's these excuses more than everything about the shipping. Now, one of my Christmas presents did not arrive from Walter. Let me tell you the story. I think I started telling a story last week. Well, I have an update. Walter got me some AccuQuilt dies. They're a pricey little thing. Okay. In fact, he outdid himself. Um, I'll tell you more about that later. But some of those dies he ordered directly from AccuQuilt in the States. Now, these suckers are heavy. So shipping, duty, all of that is expensive. So he does not order from AccuQuilt directly unless there is a fantastic sale. And I guess there was. I think it was about 50% off. Problem is, your savings are eaten up by having it shipped to us here in Canada. But there is a service. There's probably several of them. But one that we're familiar with and Walter's tried before for cross-border shopping or shipping. Basically, what this company does is they have a New York State address. And so what we order is directed to that address. Then they go across the border, pick it up at that address, and take it to their facility, which happens to be probably about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic, away from us. And we go and pick it up. Or we can have them ship it to us, too, for an additional fee. I'm not sure what they caught. Uh, charge for this, but I think it might be about 20 bucks. Well, Walter does the math and he figured, good deal. This was better than going off and buying my, the AccuQuilt dies from the usual source we buy them from. And he had done this once before and it worked out well. Not this time. This time, the package never arrived. He got onto the phone. They didn't seem to know what had happened to it. And they were basically blaming the courier ser service that they use, which was FedEx. Walter phoned FedEx. FedEx had a tracking number. FedEx said it was delivered. But it was delivered to the wrong address. But this was not the fault of FedEx. They delivered it to the address they were given. So that's the fault of this somebody. But I think pretty much, well, we're going to blame this, this cross-border shopping system. So Walter got in the blower again, got a young lady on there, 
uh, she was very nice, he said, and was helping him out and everything like that. In the meantime, we got a phone call from some guy. We didn't know him. Talked to Walter. Apparently, the package did arrive in Canada and got delivered to him by this cross-border thing. So he was going to take that back. He, he asked if we had a package that didn't belong to us because he thought maybe the two got mixed up, whatever he ordered. And he had paid duty on this as well. So we said, no, sorry, uh, we did not get your package. Well, he said he was going to drop this back off at the Central Depot for this um, company. And uh, Walter told them this, and they said they'd let him know when it, it arrived or whatever. Well, it didn't, and this woman went was off for Christmas, okay? Because this all happened, you know, around December the 21st kind of a thing. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, anyways, it... It's pretty much resolved. We were given, an, a, we got contacted, Walter got contacted that, yes, what he had ordered was sitting at that depot there for us to pick up, or they would ship it to us. Well, Walter said, we'll just go in and pick it up. So I think we'll probably do that sometime this week. No sense today, because today's Boxing Day, and most places are, well, I shouldn't say most places are closed. I think retail are, are pretty much open, but um, I think this place might be. But anyways, we'll go in maybe tomorrow or something, and pick it up. But lesson learned. Now we're a little afraid to do this kind of thing again. You know, no matter how great the sale is uh, from AccuQuilt or anywhere else. But yeah, this is, again, human... Humans make mistakes. Okay, I get that. But when humans make mistakes repeatedly, and this seems to be the way with uh, postal delivery services, it starts to get your goat. And on top of it all, the cost, especially Canada Post, I was looking at their prices for shipping things across Canada. Because I'd kind of like to, you know, a lot of the American ones, especially American YouTube creators, um, have contests or have draws or something and ship things to people. Well, I looked into it. It would cost me an arm and a leg to ship anywhere with even in my own country. Like $30, $35 to ship out to BC from where I am. And I thought well, it might be cheaper to ship right rate right within Ontario. No, it was about 50 cents less. And now, and I might investigate this further, they have something called prepaid shipping boxes. And I looked online on Canada Post, and they don't seem to be that much cheaper uh, than just going into the post office and say, hey, I want to ship this kind of a thing. So I don't know. Um, I can't afford to ship. I mean, I've had subscribers out there that would, you know, like to get their hands on some of my 3D printed objects. And, you know, I usually print a lot of them. Like the gnomes seem very popular. Um, but to ship them, and they're not heavy. They're under a pound, those things, like half a pound or, you know, you know, it costs more to ship it than it costs me to make it. A lot more. So, I don't think this is going to happen. When I do my retreats, that's why I do Amazon gift certificates. Doesn't cost me anything in shipping for those. So, yeah, it's just ridiculous. It really is. And, you know, Christmas cards, I don't know about you, but how many did you get? Now, I don't send Christmas cards out anymore. Uh, and I haven't for several years, mainly because another fortune to send something that people will look at and go, isn't that nice? Set it up on a table somewhere during Christmas season. And, you know, when they take down the Christmas decorations, the cards all go in the garbage. So you've spent five bucks on a card plus another buck to mail it. Not happening. Not happening. Um, so we had a few cards in the mail, but not many. And I think I'm not alone. I think there's a lot of people that have decided, no, this is just too much, you know, but that's the way our postal service works, especially since our federal government decided years ago, it was a great idea to make them a federal corporation as well, which means it's run like a business. Mm -hmm. So business needs to make a profit. Mm -hmm. for an essential service, a Canadian essential service. Yeah. But anyways, I hope you got all of the things that you ordered and you got them in time. 
Okay, so what else am I going to talk about? Well, what did I get for Christmas? Well, I think I have a few pictures here to show you. Um, Walter outdid himself again. So here are two of the four dies that Walter got for me. Um, he got those two dies. They're companion sets to other box sets that I have. He got those two boxes from Kawartha Quilting. So that wasn't a problem uh, with that. Now, you may wonder why I have four boxes of something called Fruitful, because those are my favorite jellies. They're those sugary jelly candies, and I absolutely love them. And every year, Walter buys me several boxes of these. And I think he gets them at Shopper's Drug Mart every year. Uh, the, the Fat Quarter Bundle has a bit of a story to it. These are fabrics out of Walter's stash that he's never going to use. And the reason he gave them to me is because he needed to weigh down one of the packages because when he didn't get the other dies from AccuQuilt because of what I just told you about the whole situation, um, he printed out the first page of the um, booklet that you print out that shows you all the dot what the dies can make and he put it in a bag but it was just a, sh a sheet of paper so he added this fat quarter bundle as well and um he doesn't want them so they're mine too i'll take them <laughs> i'll make good use of them so that's why those were there um now he bought me threads these are quilting threads the threads i use to quilt and he got me i think 14 different colors and these are colors that are um a little less well they're not the usual colors okay they're not they're um specialty colors kind of a thing i know to you they probably don't look like specialty colors but they are and uh they they are quite pricey um as well and he got me he said it, he got they were on sale um when he bought them at Worth of quilting and he got me matching bobbins to go with them all too they're so pretty on my shelves out by lucy as well so yeah um i'm loving all of those you might say it was a thready christmas because i bought walter now i can tell you what i got walter i think that's all that i've got there yeah okay so i couldn't tell you what i got walter uh before on here because in case he saw this right so what did i get walter well first of all i bought him thread i bought him orophil thread that's the thread we both use in our projects and um you know especially for garment sewing depending on you know what color fabric you're using you want matching thread so i bought him three sets of orophil so each set has 12 spools in them and uh, so 36 spools of Orofil. Now, if you are a sewer, you know that Orofil averages in price between, for a single spool of thread, between about 15 to $17. So I bought him 500, over $500 worth of thread. And I had a little problem getting it. Yep, talking about delivery. Now, it, it all worked out fine, but essentially they didn't have what I wanted at first on um, part of the order. Um, they were going to substitute, but they gave me all these different possibilities. They were waiting for their or order of Orofil to come from Italy at the time that I ordered it. And I ordered this a good six weeks before Christmas or so. Um, now, you know what logistics have been lately for delivering stuff and getting orders and stuff. So I was a little worried about this. The other thing that it bo bothered me a bit was because it didn't say it was out of stock when I put the order through and paid for it all and that kind of thing. However, this was Cindy's Threadworks out in the Western Canada. Uh, she was very, very accommodating. She was trying to do all kinds of things to make sure that I got the order. Well, long story short, her Orofil order did come in um, within about two weeks of me ordering all this stuff and I got it all and it's all great. So that was that was a good thing. Um were her prices fantastic? Is that why I bought from her? No, her prices were the average price. But the reason I bought from her as opposed to the quilt stores out here is because my local quilt store doesn't have 
a selection of these boxes. This lady had them all, all the collections. So that's why I ordered them from her. I would have preferred to have dealt with Ultimate Sewing or Kawartha Quilting, but um, well, Kawartha Quilting, I don't think, deals with Orofil, and Ultimate Sewing does, but they didn't have a selection of these box sets. Um, so, yeah, I had to get them where I could. So then I got them that, and I got them a couple of books. I got them a book about short shirt making, and then he looks through and he says, he says, I think I have this, and I went, no. I had bought him a couple of books on shirt making um, last year, and I knew for sure that this one that I ordered was not one I'd bought him before. But then he got looking through it, and he said, no, this one's different. So good. I was glad about that. And the other book I got him is about growing stuff under grow lights. Um, if the truth be known, I kind of got that for both of us because <laughs> we're both sort of doing it. Well, Walter looks after it, maintains it. So um, anyways, got him that. And then one gift I got him that I wasn't sure if he'd really want or not. And I told him that before he opened it. He says, if you don't want this, I can take it back. I got it from Amazon. But you know that Walter likes to, has a sous vide for cooking. And he loves it. But the sous vide he bought at one time was sort of a, the beginner sous vide. It was, um, well, it works fine. But it's not the more deluxe models. So I bought him a deluxe model. And from a company that has a really good name uh, in sous vide products that Walter has mentioned before. And this one is completely programmable from an app on your phone as well. So like what doesn't have an app these days, right? But, and they're expensive little devices too. Uh, this one anyways was because it was a, a more deluxe uh, version of the, you know, the one that we had, I think Walter paid maybe 80 bucks or 90 bucks for it. Uh, this one was a little bit more than that. It was over 200 uh, for it but it's got great ratings. Uh, I think it's that Anova is the name of the company that makes it. So anyways, I was a little unsure of how he'd react to this, but he seemed to be thrilled. So I'm happy about that. So now we've got two sous vides. So you let the cooking begin. And if you don't know what sous vide is, basically it is a system of cooking things in a water bath uh, and this is a stick that goes into the tub of water. It's submersible and it keeps the, the temperature of what you're cooking at a constant um, level. And so, you know, if you put in steak, it's excellent for doing meats. If you put in a steak and you want it medium rare, you will get it medium rare. Yeah, like you won't overcook it. And it does, it, and it does lobster we do lobster tails in it walter's even made creme brulee using it yeah um check it out on youtube you'll see all kinds of things people do with sous vides and that's what professional kitchens in restaurants and that they use that all the time too uh as well so if you've ever wondered when you've been to a steakhouse and you've ordered your steak medium rare and it is perfectly medium rare chances are they uh have used a sous vide for that so anyways that was our Christmas. Um, I was very happy with the things that I got. Um, and Walter seemed to be very happy with the things he got. And so, yeah, because we're hard to buy for. Extremely hard to buy for. Okay, so that was what we got for Christmas. And mentioned the grow light books. Well, let's take a look at how my grow our grow lights are doing really well. We have a jungle. Yep. In fact, um, you can see there, I've cut those off now, but when I took the picture there, some of our lettuce has kind of uh, gone a little brown. We need to um, harvest some lettuce. So this week, we're going to have some salads. Yeah, uh, with all of that. And the herbs are just going nuts, as you can see. Um, so I think um, we're going to order another one of these and to get our plants ready for uh container gardening in the nicer weather when that comes we'll do them from seeds start them in this and uh, someone told me uh the other day that um you can grow peppers under these lights as well um i was thinking of just starting the pepper plants but uh 
apparently you can grow the peppers under them too. So we might give that a try. That'd be interesting because you know what the price of lettuce and peppers, like salads are like they're made from gold anymore to, uh, to make one with the ingredients because everything is so bloody expensive. Yeah. They've had a drought here, whatever, and that kind of stuff. Again, I don't believe what I'm being told. I believe there's may have been some problems with produce this year. However, there's more than one source for produce these companies get. Not all of them had a problem. So, yeah, I smell gouging. I really do. Okay, so that takes me to the 3D uh, corner. What have I been printing? Well, yeah, if you said gnome, <laughs> you'd be right. Okay, I had to do this one, though. He was a little different from the other gnomes I've printed. He's a lot bigger. He's a big size gnome. The picture doesn't really do it justice. And I was going through some of my filaments. I just ordered a whole bunch of new filaments, expecting it this week. And this was a rainbow filament that I had. This little sucker took almost three days to print. He's not little. He's pretty big. But I really like the detail. He turned out really nice. Now you're saying, so what are you going to do with them? I don't know. <laughs> I never know. I just have this thing about gnomes. I, I think I'm obsessed. And not in a good way. So anyways, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Um, I got to break out of the mold of doing gnomes, of course, and see what else is out there. Oh, and I, just as an aside, my niece was over here uh, yesterday uh, with her family. And uh, she's into Dungeons and Dragons and all that kind of stuff. And last year for Christmas, I made her a whole bunch of the characters, the figures, um, like very large ones uh, that go with Dungeons and Dragons. And she, I was thrilled because I figured, yeah, these will be sit on a shelf and gather dust. No, what she's doing is she showed me pictures. She's painting them. She's doing detailed painting on them to, it really brings them to life. Because of course, I printed them all in one color because that's all I can do. And now she's taken them like many people who do 3D modeling and that kind of thing, she's painting them, putting in all the details and stuff like that. They're looking really good. So I was really happy that she was loving that because I didn't know if she would or not. So, yeah. So anyways, that was a good thing. Okay, so that takes me to Blast from the Past trip. This is still Australia 20... Uh, this one's actually... I've been showing you Australia 2018. But we went to Australia for Christmas and New Year's in 2016. And we went to the Sydney Opera House on New Year's Eve. We had tickets. We'd bought them way in advance. It was a gala. It involved a really fancy dinner, uh, appetizers, champagne when you walked in the door. Um, then after dinner, we went into the Opera House proper and were entertained with uh the symphony australian symphony orchestra and their opera company as well doing all kinds of different you know fun music then at inter intermission from that we went back to another part of the opera house where you could see out over the harbor and we watched fireworks at 9 p.m those are called the kids fireworks display i didn't know they had one wasn't the main one yet. Then we went back in for more entertainment in uh, with the symphony orchestra and the opera. Then we went to the after or for the actual main event of uh, the fireworks, and they had a a food appetizers, finger foods all laid out. They had champagne, beer, anything you want to drink, wine, whatever. All of this was included in the cost uh, of everything. And then we saw the fireworks, a uh, bird's eye view of it, uh, right from the huge windows in the opera house. It was fantastic. Best New Year's Eve of my life. Did it cost us? Yes, it did. It was 1100 Canadian dollars a piece. So $2,200 for the two of us for that evening. 
when Walter first told me about this, I just about crapped my pants. I went, holy crap. In fact, he said, it's $1,100. And at that point, I said, well, I thought, well, okay, it's still pricey, but that's only about $550 a piece. And it is Australia. It is the opera. It's not. He says, no, it's $1,100 each. And then I kind of, and then I went, you know, what the hell? So once in a lifetime chance to do this. So we did it. Do not regret a cent. It was the most spectacular evening, New Year's Eve evening, evening I said, that I've ever had in my life. And so I'm going to share with you. Now, my original video for this is up on my YouTube channel. And maybe you've seen it before, but maybe not. I mean, that went up quite a few. Well, that was six years ago. <laughs> so um, I have taken that and I've cut it down. I edited it a little bit. Um, uh, so that you can see it. I had to uh, cut the music that they use as the backdrop for the fireworks display because that would have violated um, copyright and, of course, monetization wouldn't happen. So I put another soundtrack in of free music, but it's not the original for it. But I think you'll get a sense of what $1,100 per person got you that night. Because we're just a couple of days away from New Year's Eve, I thought I'd show you the best New Year's Eve that I ever had in my life. And that was in 2016 when we went to Sydney, Australia, and we were there for New Year's and we went to the gala. It was very expensive. It was $2,200 Canadian for two of us, but it was well worth it. This is a series of excerpts from that evening. If you'd like to see the full video, then I will put the link in the show notes for this as well. And I'm hoping I don't get demonetized because of all the music that's in the background. But I have to tell you this, if you're ever in Sydney, Australia for New Year's Eve, this event is worth whatever they charge for it. We're on our way to uh, the Opera House for tonight's gala and walking down the street and actually we started out plenty of time <clears throat> not knowing what the crowds would be like but as you can see it's not really that heavy at this point but it's all very well controlled um there's guys on loudspeakers telling people what streets are now closed and uh, you have to go through uh checkpoints we'll see what those are like uh, in a minute and you can't get in without your tickets so see how that okay so these are all the people camped out for the fireworks tonight and the first set of fireworks does not start till nine o'clock. And then the main one's at midnight. And it, right now it's just 4.15 in the afternoon. And they're all on the steps. So these are all the people who are not, do not have tickets for the dinner at the opera. Okay. So they're looking for a table now as we speak, because there's been a bit of a muddle. Still looking for our table. But this is what the venue looks like. It kind of feels like a wedding. Okay, so they finally found us a table, and we're sitting with a very nice family from Colorado right now. And they're pouring us champagne. Yes, please. And they're pouring me champagne right now. Okay, this is nice. Thank you. And so these lovely people are from Colorado. No, this is my guy. Yeah, yeah. And so far, it's very nice. Okay, so here's what the people are doing down here. All right. We could have done that too for a price, but I much prefer what we're doing up here. This is much better. Okay, so this is dinner and it's very, very nice. It's a fillet with, um, I'm not sure what you call these potatoes and salad and all that, but it's very, <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so we've had the main course now, and now we're having the dessert, and we're being serenaded as well by the symphony. Tonight is the performance. And this is what the opera house looks like with people in it. Sorry, guys. That's okay. okay. Great. <laughs> 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 
This is amazing. <laughs> Walter just informed me that we are nine rows from the front, but there is not a bad seat in this place. They're all tiered. Everything is raised. You could not have a bad seat in here. as he leads the Australian Opera and Ballet Orchestra, although I'm slightly confused because this is their last performance as the Australian Opera and Ballet Orchestra, and the midnight that would be the Australian Opera Orchestra. That would be rebranded, relaunched, and based in the Cayman Islands to make things happen. <laughs> 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 And they gave us a very stirring rendition of a festive overture by Shostakovich in 1954 to celebrate the 37th anniversary of the 1917 October Revolution. And didn't that turn out well? Sure. <laughs> So this is the 9 o'clock fireworks. There'll be another one at midnight. Hopefully we'll have a better spot for those. All the plebes who didn't pay for the dinner and that are standing out here taking up all the spots right now. But we're supposed to have better spots at midnight. So we'll see. The 9 o'clock show. Hopefully I'll get better shots at the midnight show. Okay, so right now we've just seen the fireworks and we're at the halftime and waiting for the second part of the concert. So, how do you like the concert? Good. It's okay. Yeah. Give us a good introduction to opera and a symphony. It kind of makes me want to go to a symphony in Toronto and possibly an opera for the first time, a full-fledged one in Toronto. But I have to study up on it first. We have to see one and figure out the language. But it's a very, very nice evening, really. It is worth the 1100 bucks right now.
So that was the gala, and now we're heading for the after party. So we're going back in where we had dinner. Hopefully I'll get better shots of the fireworks later on. And I'm trying to do this while I'm walking upstairs, and it's not easy. Try not to fall down and break my neck. Okay, so part of the after party, after gala party, is canapes. Well, they do have a bar set up over here, food bar with stuff on it. But the lineups, the pickies are all up in the trough. So we haven't gone up there yet. But there was these boxes you kind of pick up and, well, okay, a couple of pieces of prosciutto, a carrot stick, and I'm not sure what the rest of it is. But to be quite honest, that doesn't look all that appetizing. But we did have free champagne. And I'm taking as much as we want with that. And it might be better stuff up there. Actually, it looks like about the same stuff. So, but overall, I still think we got our money's worth. And the wine and the champagne flow freely, if you can hear me. It's pretty loud in here. Okay, so we're here tonight and you've already seen the video. Thought I should get on to it. Two glasses of champagne? Well, one's Walters. Okay. This was 1100 bucks each, all right? But I recommend it. If you come to Sydney and you're going to do New Year's Eve, this is the only way to do it. You're going to get a great dinner. Do not cheap out on it. Do the dinner, do the show, do the after party. You get the booze, the whole bit, you get hors d'oeuvres, and it's Sydney. How many times are you going to have in your life to be able to do Sydney? So, Happy New Year! Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one! At the end? Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> Which is it? Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Okay, so the party's over, and uh, there's Walter in blue light, as you can see, and we're making our way out of the opera house now, as it is, after mm, quite a few champagne glasses of champagne and you know, this is really hard to keep this steady because I'm walking down a lot of steps. I'm showing you what it's like after the party's over, okay? And they're everywhere. There's security, whatnot. But you know, I don't want you to make that, think that's paranoid or not because the whole thing has been really organized. 
What's that? Who's the idiot? You're I'm not an idiot. Why am I being an idiot? Bite me hard. Whatever. I'm just showing people what this is, looks like. This is reality. This is what's happening here. There's a lot of people. It's really warm. But it's nice. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so I hope that all of you had a really good New Year. And, well, you should have been in Sydney for it because it's a really hot time. And so that takes me to events in the past week. And, of course, Christmas. The biggie, right? Um, so on Christmas Eve, we did, and some of you were there, we had a special cocktails, Christmas Eve cocktails with Stephen and Walter live on a Zoom. And we had put that link down in the show notes for weeks before and everything. So we had, we didn't have a lot of people, but um, we had enough. It was fun. Um, we talked a lot. Um, we did it for about three hours. And we, we had our, our drinks and we had our, our charcuterie. And uh, it was really nice to talk to everybody. And I, I think everybody that was there had a good time and showed us some of their creations and things that were special. We heard some stories. Um, I think this is going to become a tradition. I think we're going to do this again uh, because it, it was a whole lot of fun. And then, of course, we had Christmas uh, dinner here. We had my sister and her husband, my brother-in-law, and my nephew and niece, her adult children. And we also had her in-laws, uh, my brother-in-law's parents. That was nice. So there were eight of us for dinner. And I'll just show you what our table setting looked like um, here. Let me switch over. So here's what the dining room looked like. And um, I love I love to set a table. I really do. I always have. So you can see here, I've got a lot of the things that I made for this table. The napkins I made, the little reindeer napkin rings I made. You And look, surprise, there are gnomes. A gnome at everybody's uh, place setting, which uh, they could all take a gnome home if they wished uh, after dinner. Um, the table runner, I made that. I think I made that last year. And uh, yeah, I think the table looks really quite pretty out of it with the red and green. And I pulled out the good dishes. Um, we seldom use the china. I'd always wanted china since I was a kid. Don't ask why. I don't know. And so we have a complete uh, place settings for 12, um, but we never use it anymore. So I pulled that out. I even pulled out my chargers, the red things that are underneath each plate. I've had those for years, never use them. You know, there was a point in time when chargers were the thing for table settings. And that's when I got them. Well, it's not so much a thing now, but I'll let you in on a little secret. I didn't want to have to wash the tablecloth and the table runner. So I felt that if I used chargers underneath the plates, there'd be less chance of something getting slopped onto those. Um, and it worked. They're perfectly pristine. So not a problem, which is nice. Um, yeah, so there's the table setting for all this. Oh, and the silver, that is silver plated. Something I always wanted to. I don't know why when I was much younger. Well, this was my grandmother's silver and I inherited it. Actually, my mother had inherited it um, and she gave it to me when we got married. Um, that was our Christmas, or not our Christmas, that was our wedding gift from my mother. Okay, think what you will uh, with that. But anyways, I have silver, but I seldom use the silver. Oh, and some of you might cringe at this that do have silver. And you'll say, well, you don't put it in the dishwasher or your good dishes in the dishwasher. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. No problem whatsoever. Never had. Always have done that. Yep. Doesn't strip the silver plate off them. Doesn't leave them tarnished. And uh, when I take them out, if there's a little bit of water spot, I just take a tea towel, a clean, dry tea towel, and just give them a little wipe real quick before I put them back in their little um, chest. So, yeah, I do that. Mm -hmm. Sue me works <laughs> okay so that was the table setting but i didn't take pictures i was going to take pictures of the appetizers and of the food that's something my father always did at special events he'd always take pictures of all the food 
Well, here are my dessert platters, and uh, we didn't touch one thing on those. My sister brought over a, a little platter of Christmas goodies. Uh, her mother-in-law brought over a little platter of Christmas goodies. We didn't touch those either. I sent them home with them. We were too stuffed to eat any of this. And so I have put all that stuff back in the fridge and in the freezer. And, uh, well, I'll probably nibble on bits and pieces of it uh, throughout this year. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they look pretty, didn't they? I never even took the saran wrap off them. No. So that didn't happen. Now, there's an overhead view, just in case. Uh, now, I did not make any of these. These I bought at a local bake, sh bake shop. There were some mince tarts. I love mince meat. Um, variety of squares. Uh, some Christmas cake. I love Christmas cake. I know some people hate fruit cake, but I love it. And little cookies and things like that. So, the day was nice. It was fun. I was very tired. And I loved, I make sure I clean up. Actually, I'm cleaning as I go when people are here. And they know that about me. If I've disappeared into the kitchen while they're all having conversation and, you know, uh, between courses or whatever, I'm in the kitchen rinsing off the plates, getting them in the dishwasher, all that kind of stuff. Because the one thing I hate about dinner parties or that kind of thing is I hate the cleanup afterwards. If I can get a lot of it cleaned up and people are still enjoying themselves and don't even notice I'm not there, uh, then that's just fine. But nevertheless, I'm an old man. And I said to Walter, we're not doing this next year. <laughs> My sister can do it next year. My sister kind of, well, she has us over to her place on special occasions all the time. So it was really our turn to do it. But she kind of manipulated me. As Walter says, I was um, manipulated or uh, volunteered. Uh, there's another expression when you're forced to volunteer. Anyways, it was still a lot of fun, but I'm sore. My back and legs, because I'm running up and down the steps that you can't see behind me, because we were downstairs for, the for you know, appetizers and drinks and things like that. Then we were upstairs, and I'm going up and down and up and down the stairs. And I knew this was going, the next day I was going to be sore, and I am. I'm sore. I'm not a young man, you know, but I'll get over it. It was fun. It was worth the effort. It really was. Okay, so I do have a picture, though, of Walter's um, doing the, well, not a picture. I have a little video that I'm going to insert uh, right here showing you Walter working on the tur turkey. Now, I wanted, I was going to take a picture of the turkey when it was fully cooked and came out of the oven and everything like that, and I forgot. And it was delicious, and we have a lot of it left over. So we're going to be eating a lot of combinations of turkey things uh, for the next week. Um, but it, it turned out beautifully uh, with it. Okay, so it's the day before Christmas, and Walter's getting the bird ready. He's had his hand right up the turkey's bum, and now he's just making sure it's a nice clean bum uh, with it as well. He pulled out some things that are in it. We're not going to say what that thing looks like, but yeah. Some of you with imagination will get it. So, what do you... They don't put the, uh, the what do you call it? Uh, giblets? Giblets in there anymore. They just put the neck in. Oh, well, it's putting your neck out. Whatever. Is that a big problem for you? Or do you like to make giblet gravy? Well, this is interesting. What? <laughs> As you play with it. Don't play with the turkey. How would you like somebody to stick it? Never mind. Uh, <laughs> so, um, what's your secret to the perfect bird, Walter? What do you do? No, I don't know yet. I you put don't stuff know yet. on it. Like what stuff on it? I noticed you put butter in the bottom of the pan and put that in the oven. What's yeah. the point? Well, to brown the butter so that uh, it will make a base for the gravy. Uh -huh. Now, so what, what are you going to put? You're not going to stuff it, are you? No. No, because you're going to make the stuffing separate. So um, what are you going to put on the outside of the turkey? Oh, probably some sage and paprika and rosemary uh, and thyme i don't know maybe something when are you going to scarborough fair um uh-huh and then uh do you put the turkey on a rack in the pan yes i do and why do you do that so it's easier to lift it oh and so for moisture besides the butter are you going to add water or chicken broth 
And by the way, I'm there's some chicken broth in the fridge. I'm going to add like... anything until the later stages of the cooking so uh -huh. that it, the gravy is more rich. Oh, rich gravy. Okay. So, well, we're looking forward to seeing how your bird turns out. I eat the bird juicy. Some of you might remember that reference. It used to be a commercial on TV when I was a kid. Pies. He made apple pies. Uh, we only ate one. Uh, we got another one. And pie is one of my favorite food groups. And Walter makes fantastic pies as well. Um, I serve scalloped potatoes. And uh, those turned out really nice. You know, when you make scalloped potatoes, sometimes they become either too thick or too runny. Mine were perfect. I mean, I've made them many times before. I kind of know what I'm doing. But still, there's that one moment where you go, oh, is it going to work? But they turned out nice. Uh, we just did green beans. Um, and I did braised carrots. Someone sent me, one of my subscribers sent me a recipe for doing braised carrots. And I used that recipe. And those turned out quite nice. Uh, they were fine as well. Um, to be honest, though, I, I don't think they were... They weren't, they were good, but I don't know if it's worth the effort <laughs> or not. Um, they were good. They were good. So anyways, um, and we had stuffing or dressing, whatever you want to call it. We interchangeably use, you know, stuffing and the word dressing for it. And what else we had? Oh, my sister made a cabbage salad because I'm lousy at making cabbage salad. Um, sent most of that home with her <laughs> again. Too much food. Too much food. So, yeah, it was nice. And I'm glad it's over. And I can heal. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what's coming up? Well, I already talked about New Year's Day, Creative Day, So Day, whatever you want to call it. That's on January the 1st, 2023, starting at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Come whenever you wish. It's come and go whenever you wish. I mean, for some of you... Um, who live out in the West Coast, you know, 5 a.m. is would be the start time for you. And I have a feeling you would like to sleep, probably sleep in a little bit for New Year's. But the link for that's in the show notes. And yeah, and just on a final note, January's coming. And it's January blues. Everybody has that letdown feeling. And that's one reason why I'm doing the So Day uh, on January 1st to start off the new year with a bash, you know, kind of a thing to get us all re-energized, I'm hoping, so we don't fall into that. But they happen anyways. And I've had them before where you just feel, well, don't want to do anything. Don't let that get your goat. Okay. Work on things. Try a new hobby. Clean out your cupboard. <laughs> you know, do something. Keep yourself active. Go for a walk. Something like that. Um, you know, maybe have friends over or whatever for, you know, cocktails or something, little munchies, like not a big spectacular dinner, something easy. But, you know, it's a downtime for a lot of people. And it just, you know, it helps to get through January. So I hope you had a great Christmas. I hope you're looking forward to New Year with whatever you're doing and have a really great week. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye for now.